Hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of Guild Gab. We probably look a little different here. Corvalex is no longer a thing. <laughs> I'm my own man. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so this is a show where we talk about anything and everything Guild Wars 2, focusing on PvE and lore, and today we are talking about Seeds of Truth, the seventh episode in the second season of the living world of Guild Wars 2. I did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Let me introduce my co-hosts. To my left is Akasaurus Rex. Hello. To my underneath me is Corvus of Corvus Plays. Hello. And over there, <laughs> Caddy Corner to me is Alex of the RPG Shack. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello. I'm back. I'm alive. You are back. You are alive. You have internet. And you blasted through episodes five, six, and seven of The Living World, right? I have, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've forgotten what happened, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was so fast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, so, um, we have just got Seeds of Truth to talk about, so, um, what are your guys' thoughts on Seeds of Truth? Um, sure. Yeah. Not as, it didn't feel as bad as uh, the one before, but it, it still felt really short. It was, it was better good, though. than the last one? Yeah, definitely <laughs> better. Yeah. It um, was, it, it was kind of weird that they tried to do a cliffhanger without there actually being a cliffhanger at the end, because <laughs> right? it just... It it just kind of finished, yeah. and th there's there's all the stuff about the the egg, and then there's like we're jumping through time to find um, what was going on with the egg, and I was like, right, then. and surely like you'd you'd want to finish with kind of ah we think the egg is over here, and then everyone kind of goes ah we think we know where the egg is, well see ya, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and that was kind of it, I, and I was there, I was like yeah yeah did I miss I, something? I, I feel it? like it would have been way more impactful if we didn't see that door with the symbol yeah. in the trailer. Yeah. Because that's exactly that what I was would have been say. the big like, oh, what is mm -hmm. this door? And then we have, you yeah. know, a week to theorize on the door. But they showed us that in the trailer. So they basically yeah. showed us the big end reveal in the yeah. trailer. Yeah, because yeah. I, I saw that and I assumed that we'd be going through it, this patch. And they also showed that picture of those little seed creature things as well. So I assumed that we were going to go in and see what was going on and then... Yeah, nope. <laughs> and they're giving us, you're right, they're giving us all these teaser images about Ritlock, and we have yet to see Ritlock. Yeah. Really I, think they're having, I think they're having a problem with, um, it's like, they they they, they said that they're going to try and do this, but they still have a problem with it, and that, like, they can have an overall story season, like, story for the season, but you still got to make each episode feel have like a beginning, middle, and end of some yeah. kind and feel more empowered, whereas this just ended again, like, like the last one. You're like, what? That's what? I mean, it was it was a little more fun at least, but then it was like, yeah, like the the big reveal end thing was just the freaking door we saw in the bloody trailer. Like, it's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's not it's, fulfilling. I'm not, uh, I need more money. You know, food for <laughs> better, man. It's like... But I, th I think it's kind of interesting what the because um, apparently I, I didn't watch uh, uh, WP's uh, video on this, but the second I saw that door with the snakes, I was like, "That's got to be something to do with the forgotten." Because right. if you if you remember when uh, if you did Glint's uh, cave in Guild Wars One, you had your eight different rooms full of bloody forgotten where they sap your health, disable your abilities. It's kind of fun, and um, it's not it's awful. Hate it, hate it, hate it. <laughs> but um, I think if the the forgotten were there to guard Glynn, right? Uh, they they kind of their goal in in that instance was to stop you getting through the cave, and you know there's there's the bonus where you try and steal one of Glint's eggs and you manage to do it. And now Kate's stolen one of Glint's eggs, mm -hmm. and if she's taken it through the door with the the forgotten symbol on, it kind of stands to reason that she's seeking out the forgotten. To try and help us safeguard the egg, and um, right, right, and the um, and the f if I remember rightly, the forgotten were there. Uh, they were sent down to Tyria by the, or they were placed on on the world of Tyria by the old gods to kind of guide the other races and try and protect them before all this stuff happened with the magic and the shattering of the bloodstone and everything. So hopefully, if the forgotten are brought back in, and you know they can kind of protect try and protect the egg while while it's growing, hatching and being nurtured. There's actually somewhat of a force of good bolstered by the by the six gods to 
kind of take the fight to the dragons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool as anything. Mm. But it's, yeah. I, the, the biggest, oh. con- like the most confusing thing about um, the whole K thing is that it, even with the, with this episode, we didn't really get an answer answer as to why she would want the egg at all. Yeah, like, that's a big mm-hmm. point. <laughs> like if she was looking for someone to help look after, her, then why wouldn't she just do it with us and stuff like that? Like I just, yeah, I, I really want them to give us a reason as to why she took it, and uh, that's why I was expecting this patch, and I totally didn't get that. This they, patch didn't give us any answers. It, I mean, it, it delved deeper into her past, which was great, but people on Reddit and stuff have pointed like errors out in that. You know, yeah. Silvari that that were supposed to be dead but weren't, and Silvari that died afterwards that were like had died then, but the other person hadn't died, and, and like these really the weird inconsistencies and stuff like that. Hmm. And I don't know, it, it just this patch felt like I'd, I really enjoyed the mechanics and stuff of it, and it was cool seeing Kate and Falling like interact like that as well, and how the Azura did experiments and stuff. But it was just it felt really rushed. This one, and I don't know. Hopefully, uh, the finale is gonna, you know, make up the for it. The but... finale has to blow our minds. Yeah, yeah. that's all. I mean, I if you say. think about, if you think about how good um, the last one was, you know, it it wrapped it, it wrapped some stuff up, but most of all, it was really satisfying, you know, to finally stomp um, Scarlet, and then we got the big cutscene and the reveal of more Dramoth and all that stuff. But it like I there's so many things that they have to wrap up here that I'm really unsure as to how they're gonna go about it. It'll yeah. have to be a lengthy episode, and if it, it is really lengthy, if if it's super long, that's great. But I kind of wish they'd maybe taken some of that and put it into this patch, and maybe the one before as well. Like they could have spread it out better. Right, give us well, some think- kind of reveal in this mm. episode. Yeah. We wanted answers so bad. We- Still, we still got more. We questions just got more questions. Answers. Yeah, exactly. We did get one. You mentioned the egg. Um, we did get one possible clue. Um, uh, when the big thing about this patch was Win having a secret, and it was Fowling overhearing her talking to the mother tree about mm. something that ha- can Give have power, uncontrollable so. or incredible power over all Silvari. So that was pretty, That was one of the most intriguing things of this episode because we haven't really heard that it put at least put like that before, like yeah. an yeah. item or a thing that can have this kind of power over Savari. And the Savari knowing about this, being so young, we're playing this episode when they're only two, the the firstborn are only two years old. Yeah. So yeah. it's something that was either discovered very quickly or something that it is like the pale mother just knew that this thing has control over them and is that the egg is that dragons we we don't know we didn't get any answers but it was a possible clue to something maybe? well it's it it's it's interesting that everyone talks about the the origins of the Silvari from the tree that ventari and, and ronan planted but all you get about where the seed came from is it was a cave out west and yeah. that is pretty much it so i think if we're going to be looking at one of the big reveals, because like you say, we've still got a couple to go. We've got, we've, we've still got to find out what monstrous secret Scarlet's hiding. Because if you remember oh, all yeah. the way, uh, yes, Kate, sorry. Because if you remember all the way back to the, um, oh bugger, the molten facility patch. You know, there's the bit where Kate's appearing in the hologram, and she's like, "Ooh, I know what you did, Kate." Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah. That's still not been revealed, yeah. and I was expecting that to kind of come around today. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's what we all expected. Kind of, this patch. Kind of, things go around and uh, oh Vorp by the way I only found yeah, this out yeah. today Vorp does anyone know where we've seen him before he was the guy that was trying to steal Timmy's device wasn't he no was that he was Flux that... but they oh, did, they it, did say that uh, uh, Vorp was he wanted Timmy to be his apprentice yeah right right but okay, she chose a... chose uh, Zoja I knew there was yeah. something to do with that other than <laughs> that I'm not sure I didn't look I didn't look it up you guys have actually seen him fairly recently. He is the Azura that gives you the little device to go and um, in the Blood and Madness patch. He's the Azura that gives you Vorp's device to go into Gendaran Fields and use the little thing and eventually get the Candy Corn Elemental. So he's he's the oh, little right, Azura right. outside the Blood and Madness story instance in the Black oh. Citadel. Oh. <laughs> so he's still there. There is me. That's I'm not sure thing. when he stopped being a douche and actually right. started trying to help us. But, <laughs> like, <you know. laughs> I was kind of surprised after all this this entire patch having to do, or at least one whole story mission having to do with this intense, like, 
hatred, I think, that the Silvari should have towards the Asura, though I know mm -hmm. that's not a lot of their, their nature. If you follow Ventari's tab, yeah. that's not their nature, so they're not going to feel hate towards them. But, um, like, you would think, like, the Nightmare Court would be, yeah. you know, wildly really against, against the Asura. Um, and, and yeah. how, yeah, so how is Vorp just hanging out there totally safe and no one goes up to him like, hey, you remember how you experimented on Solvari? Like, <laughs> Well, no. I, 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 I don't know this. I'm going to have to look it up while we're talking. Does anyone know what ever happened to Caden? Because he was the founder of the Nightmare Court, wasn't he? Not Fowlin. Was he? Yeah. yeah. Fowlin joined afterwards. She's the leader now, though, right? Yeah. She's the leader, so I assume Caden died at some point, and, um... Hmm. Yeah, I... I guess yeah, the that... writers just aren't paying attention on those details. <laughs> just kind of... No, I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe they're not paying attention. I Maybe there's... Now, there's some things that, you know, like you've said, Corvus, people have pointed out just inconsistencies and stuff. Yeah. Now, maybe those are yeah, mistakes, cause there was, but... Yeah, because it was like, there was one so very... And it was a firstborn, I can't remember his name, but he was the first of Ari to die. But he was in this patch talking about how, if, like, Azura were killing secondborn. Mm. So, mm -hmm. obviously, he wasn't the first of Ari to die. Right. If he was alive, talking about other people dying. And yeah. it's just, I don't know, it, it's, it's just strange that they'd overlook something like that. I think it was quite a while ago that they said that, um, like, around launch. So, you know, fair enough. Uh -huh. It's just a simple mistake kind of thing. But it just seemed a bit strange. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms, in, in terms yeah, of what's been going on with the law, I think it's it's certainly been one of the the, the, the three episodes. Because like you said, I've I've had to play them all pretty much back to back. Yeah. <clears throat> the law is actually kind of really interesting because they fi they finally finally started bringing the Guild Wars one stuff in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I cut, I kind of I I lost internet the day that the Halloween patch went live, and I've had I've had nothing since then so i've missed everything in the community about did you have to buy the like episodes five and six no i got um, a, a very good friend of mine um who i trust with my uh with my account <laughs> logged in for. oh good like, oh that's good so, yeah oh. <laughs> the thing is like I'm, I'm, I'm a yorkshireman and yorkshiremen are legendary tight so i was like if i don't have to pay for it but no so uh yeah i, I managed to log in and play all three of them through and um <laughs> And uh, it was it was really interesting because you go from kind of what was it echoes of the past, which you kind of jumped out, and you got to wander around the um, the library, yeah. which is really I spent about an hour in there just <laughs> yeah. just like reading everything. There's Zaitan's tail up on the top, yeah, and, so good. And all that those was a really cool things. part, yeah. I spent about half my, an hour in one there, of my and then about two hours watching Winning Potatoes videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that, Corvus? I uh, just saying that was probably one of my favorite patches um, that we've ever got. I just think it was it was just so fun walking around and like being excited to go to the next book and stuff like that, or mm. finding a book you missed and being like, oh yes, there's another one to read. Right. I think yeah, that's cause... probably the most exciting episode mm. in the second half. Uh, was the yeah, first one, definitely. which was good to start out with a bang and hopefully yeah. the end with a bang. Yeah. Also, so the, the, there's a statue of Abaddon in front yeah. of the library, isn't yeah. there? It's like yeah. the god of secrets. <laughs> they like talking about secrets, don't they? They they, they love secrets, yeah. and secrets, yeah. and more secrets and more secrets and secrets and <laughs> secrets, secrets plus more secrets. It's, yeah, cause cause go... it's more of an order of whispers thing, surely, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, instead of the priory. But you know, it was, it was just kind of frustrating because it, we we didn't get much. Uh, um introspection of what Keith is actually thinking throughout this um, yeah. thing because like yeah. what's what's the point of going into her shoes if we don't actually hear yeah. anything of worth from her that's what yeah. feels that's missing like the saw, um, saw, substance like, to this yeah. like, we saw like events that she, she will have gone through like things like yeah. stuff that happened to her and we heard a lot for, of what Fallon thought but we really didn't hear much from Keith herself like personally and I just think it's kind of a shame as well because I was hoping to find more out about her character. Yeah, I actually. But it was more just like uh, Fowlin saying stuff that she felt, and then Kate just being like, "Okay, okay, yeah, let's go uh, kill all uh, these." That guys. actually, I I ended the episode being very confused on Kate's stance. I'm like, "Are we?" Yeah. Because in some of it she was agreeing with what Fowlin was saying, but then in some of it she was she was disagreeing. So, mm. but then in in the end, I just got the the feeling that 
she she's just was head over heels in love with Fallon. So she was like, okay, yeah. I may disagree with you, but I'll do it because it's you and I love That's you exactly and I trust I you. Well. So, but it was like you said, we didn't hear her internal dialogue. So I'm like, am I supposed to think that Kate is truly sinister along with Fallon? Am I supposed to think she was just going along with her? Was she secretly trying to stop her or what? Like, I felt so bad killing the centaurs. Yes. So I was like, I don't want to kill these centaurs. Like... <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I have to. They're red. So I was like, but is Kate wanting to do this or is Kate just protecting Fallon? So it was a little confusing. On on the subject of of the bad guys, did anyone who soloed any of these three personal story bits find them excessively hard doing them on your own? I died a couple times, yeah. I I just start, I mean, I play a ranger, no jokes, please, but. I, I get enough Ranger. of it in Guild anyway, <laughs> but it, no, it's just it, and like the thing is, I'm 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 running like my ascended um, spotter build and all that, but I just kept getting absolutely smashed by like yeah, yeah. the terror griffs. While they're a fantastic new enemy, they're hard, and like Togo Stormmane or whatever his name is, he's got a lot of kind of arbitrary knockdowns and health, kind of sappy things. And so, am, am I just? crap at this or is this legitimately <laughs> no those pterogryphs are bitches <laughs> <laughs> which one had ha, had the pterogryphs again? well the pterogryphs are now in the open world I think yeah, they in were the introduced in, were uh, in Tangled Paths I think I could be wrong mm-hmm. no wait I it's don't just know. with the silver waste whichever one brought silver waste I think oh, I just kind of because yeah. I, uh, I, I like gave up Please. on the I think it's like the first one back when you go into Glenn's cave. Um, those like uh, weird, like uh, I, 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 facets, prism things. Yeah, the facets yeah. things. I just freaking gave those, up on that because those were tough. Glenn, Glenn's <laughs> lair was tough. I had no clue what to do with those, and I was like, "This is just pissing me off." I'm gonna do the next yeah. one. <laughs> the achievements <laughs> for that patch were like they started off being so fun, like you know, do this, like uh, defeat the boss without being stunned and stuff like that. Um, and you know it was fun, but it it very quickly got really annoying, mm-hmm. especially because necros only have like two ways of getting stability, and one of them lasts for <laughs> one second. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a pain uh-huh. in the ass for me to do. But yeah, I I, I think the boss fights uh, with all of these patches have been so fun, and I really hope there's something big, like mm-hmm. like them in in the finale. They have to go out with some some kind of fight like that. But at this yeah, point, what is there going to be? Like, everybody was expecting something with more actual Mordremoth, even though we've seen his influence more and more every week in the Silver Wastes. Yeah. But it's like we don't have, like, we knew we were going to have the final battle with Scarlet at the end of Season 1. Yeah. We don't know what we're going to get in two weeks. Yeah. Like, if you, Yeah, well, well, that's a good point. Like, if you think about what we knew about the finale last time, like, we knew we were going to bring the war to her, you know, we were going to propagate punch her in her face and, and stuff like that but like this time i have no clue what they're gonna do like they could literally do anything yeah you know there's just and and i think that's kind of a shame because you want to build hype and you know these right. cliffhangers have been obviously trying to do that but um the last patch didn't really give us anything apart from like what's behind the door it's <laughs> there's nothing that you know to be super excited about that we know we're probably going to get next patch yeah. well so, i don't know the thing is, I think we're gonna have to wait until the new year because today yeah. is the fourth of December, and the next time the patch drops is the sixteenth, yeah. which is gonna be the which is gonna be the Winter's Day update. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's gonna be January before we before we find out. So we're gonna to have to. No, I. The we, 16th is the is it? last They're bringing episode. them both out on the same day, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. they're oh, yeah. both yeah. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, they probably will. But I still think we're going to wait till the next year just because I, I honestly don't think they're going to be able to give us all the answers or at least, an, yeah. you know, I think we're going to yeah. have to wait for season three or expansion or whatever yeah. they're going to yeah. do. Oh, I, I don't said believe anything we're, we're not going to get all the answers. We, <clears throat> no. we have to get no. something, though. I, I mean, I still think it's quite likely we'll end on getting the egg back and then it'll hatch or something. But... That's I don't know. It's just not. It's there like be something you know they awesome they, in that egg. Yeah, <laughs> they, they teased that the finale of season one was like Mordremoth, and it'll, we're gonna it'll end be, season. It'll be, uh, Ritlock in the egg. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, Ritlock. Ritlock coming back or 
something. <laughs> season season two is probably just going to end with okay, we've got this like new ally in in the baby dragon or something. But it's still at the end of it going to be like, well, you know, still have to Yay. go more. Like, you know, it's just <laughs> I don't know. Like they need to give us something good because while the dragon being born is is would be amazing as an ending, but I think it's it doesn't it's not like it's a target like that we're going to go for next. It's not like it's a uh, right. It's like, you know, okay, it's born and that's kind of it for now. It's it's not really like something that's going to make us excited to carry on because it's not like a step forward, really. Mm-hmm. I, I unless like they just be like, we can um, definitely win with this dragon. Right. I kinda, I'd, I'd kind of like to see, I'm, I mean, like, A, I'm much more excited to honestly uh, get through this last patch so that we can find out what's coming after this season because I'm, I'm actually much more interested in that to see what... Yeah happens after this season Fr- frankly i almost mm-hmm. don't care at the end of the season but i i would hope that they would do something like have more Dermoth actually awaken at the very end of this yeah. patch that'd and be then, amazing then mm-hmm. that can bleed into an expansion or next season really well because then everyone can be like oh crap he's here and like yeah. show what his awakening does like yeah. like right. an explosion mm-hmm. like the continent's cracking i don't know something but yeah you know, that would be the best ending and yeah. i'd be very happy if they mm-hmm. did that alex I'm we really... actually haven't Oops, you haven't been here for a while so we haven't heard your um opinions uh lately on what you think about an expansion coming mm. like oh yeah because there was um there was a a a, an, a, a release from NCSoft a bit earlier this year that says something about arena net profits being projected that an expansion would be released sometime in 2015. Yeah, an right. expansion is is really what's needed. I think while um, I think dry top and silver wastes are very very similar in the way that you, you after yeah. the, after the patch stuff is finished, the only reason that you're really going to go there is to um, is to get your materials for cracking your ambrite weapons or your uh, luminescent armor, which yeah. is a, a, a slightly different discussion that I want to have it later on because uh, I have I have notes and notes. But um, I think <laughs> I think I think a full expansion would would, would be really really cool. Um, yeah, I, I certainly want to see new maps with with hearts in them. I think that's something yeah. that really is needed. Even Same here. Definitely. I mean, even if it ties into something like the Dominion of Winds becoming unlocked or um, the Elon River becoming accessible from the other side of Orso can sail down and go into the Crystal Desert and fight Kral or maybe even take on Palawa Joko down in Alona, which would be cool, wouldn't it? It'd be a little bit Lord of the Rings <laughs> if we could recruit his undead army to the cause, but <laughs> it's something I'd really like to see. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I would would quite like to see an expansion an expansion mate and i know that people have been clamoring for new races rather than new classes at the moment yeah mm-hmm. um which i'd kind of like to see in in all seriousness i i can i think the tengu are uh, are the main kind of front runners for for the new class partly because they only have to really skin the char but whatever um and <laughs> um i mean honestly i'd, I'd love to see the lagos yeah. come into it but i don't think they're they're like a major player in kind of the uh, what, yeah. in the storyline really They've not been fleshed out so much, which yeah. is kind of a shame. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, they're they're cool. I know. But like, I love- the, the, but like the the only thing about the Tango though, even though they are super super popular, like uh, in the library sequence, um, mm-hmm. our arena seemed to kind of like smugly do do some kind of sort of not official but sort of like o- officially state their opinions on certain things like um they like kind of bluntly kind of said the dragons and the gods are not related and people have tried to do, uh, tried to combine them and they're not they basically had a book <laughs> saying that and then they also for the tangu also very clearly stated the tangu's opinion saying we we, we know the, we know a lot of races are going to fight these dragons we're going to run away see ya um yeah. so mm-hmm. it kind of suits their perspective that they want to run away um, which is perfectly fine for their opinion. Sucks for us players, but yeah. right. Uh, but I like the idea that we came up with last time that maybe Mordremoth oh. kind of forces yeah, them yeah. to fight mm. him. Like you know, they, it, it, all the vines come up. Maybe they're waging their own war inside their walls right now, yeah. and we don't. Maybe, we just yeah. don't see it. And maybe it gets so bad that they're forced to come out, forced to ask us for help, forced to join our fight. And that could be a great opening personal story for the Tengu. Is how yeah. they came from that personal battle into being forced to help us. So I it's think, still possible. Yeah, I, th- I think that'd be cool. I mean, 
at, at this point, I th certainly think they have to they have to weave the Tengu into the living story. Maybe even if the Tengu become like an unlockable race after you've got so yeah. far into it. So yeah. if you complete they, the, they the story all the, way up, <laughs> all the way up to the end of season two, you understand why the Tengu become involved, and your reward is like um, a race unlock or something. Oh. That'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. That's interesting. Yeah. It's. I mean. Star Wars The Old Republic does something a little bit similar, except that you have to, um, you don't like, you unlock races by playing them to like level 50 and you unlock classes by playing their entire personal, their entire class story. Mm -hmm. Or you can just buy it in the cash shop. So <laughs> I would be very wary about that. But I, I think that'd be really, really cool. And so what, um, I've not actually watched the last episode yet where you uh, discussed it. So what, was, what were everyone's thoughts on the expansion? Well, I th I think it's likely to come next year. This this that NC stuff report, like you said, so they're gonna feel pressure from their publisher just just mm. because f money reasons, <laughs> um, and also the community definitely wants it. I think as well, like the fact that we've not heard what's gonna be happening after Winter's Day, is kind of a sign their no, sales nothing. in China and in the West, um, are kind of less than what they were expecting. It's it's All decent, right. but it's not as much as they'd like initially thought. Um, and they're not going to be able to keep going with just gem stops, uh, gem shop stuff. Like it's just not going to. I don't think it will just. I think their 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 best bet would be to have like a box to buy or you know a digital yeah. download kind of thing. Um, like, and I think it's just in their interest as well. Like I mean, it, they had to take breaks. Whether that's to do with you know them struggling to push stuff out regularly, or whether it's more to do with setting the people aside to do background projects or or whatever. But they can't really go on forever doing these two week updates i think the story mm. it would just it would it would damage the story i think because they can't put as much in as they'd want um you know if it yeah. was just the small chat windows and stuff like that and and i think it just from every sense the community their money um and how much detail they can put in how much they'd want to put in i think an expansion just makes more sense mm -hmm. yeah and they can still roll out living living world stuff you know, with an expansion yeah. and stuff, but I think it's just the best decision to make, and I think next year is likely. You know, I think is it is it not the like ten ten year Guild Wars kind of anniversary oh, thing next God, year? Oh God, yeah, well? it is next year. So, yeah, next year, wow. Yes, yeah, so so they they've got that time. reason as well to to yeah. put, put one out. Maybe so I think, that is our mind blowing thing. Maybe because they're like an unforgettable end. Maybe it's not the story. Maybe it's the announcement announcement of an expansion. Well, who knows? That'd be really cool. Well, um, yeah, I forgot yeah, they said that actually about how the season was going to end. Unforgettable end thing. is <laughs> what Peter Freeze kept saying. He kept saying <laughs> those end. words. I'm like, okay, is, I'm going to trust just, you. Is it just kind of it? Is it just it unforgettably it's bad? bad. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> no. Should have please it's like Bobby Stein. Bobby Stein, I've got you on Twitter, mate. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Oh, <laughs> Also, too, because like there, there, there are two things that 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 I was thinking about as well is that like um this this year one big thing that they had a, as a draw on their resources was the whole China launch. Mm -hmm. So yes. next year there's no big new country launch that they have to yeah. think about or put anything into, and also um with the crazy uh, sales of the Warlords of Draenor expansion having like three yeah. million people come back to the damn thing. That that's gonna have even more pressure from NCSoft saying, guys, you got a good thing here. Can you now? Yeah, it's like yeah. three million came out of the blue. Come on, guys, you could you could have like three million like new Guild Wars two subs if you just uh, well they don't have subs of course, but you know you could have like three million at new sales if you bring or mm -hmm. more if you bring out this expansion because people want it. They and we like it, having expansions are boxes. always. <laughs> Expansions are always good to bring new people in as well, you know, like people yeah, might exactly. have put the oh, game yeah. down, people, but for a lot of it, it's just people who will, because it's an, an, a thing they can promote. They can't do like proper adverts for a two-week patch two. <laughs> that's in the middle of a season or, right. you know, stuff like that. Or here, look at this, it's an advert for a season three starring, but no one's played season two or these new players right. haven't. It's, They're like, it's oh, only I'm really going to be in the middle of it, whereas an expansion yeah, would be kind of... It's like a perfect place to start, you exactly. know, here, go. There's new races, so you can start from the beginning and you've not missed anything and all this stuff. I just and think it, it, makes, yeah. it makes the most sense, you know. Like, it's like there's, there's like no harm in like, an, in like an MMORPG like just saying like, uh, well, this is this is what we we're aiming for. This is what we're doing, and now we're going to do this, okay. and, and just kind of like, 
I would kind of hope they could kind of either axe or just really modify the the living world season stuff and just like say yes this expansion's coming out and we're putting all of our effort into it like this year and just like how like we've seen other MMOs like do things like well we did that this time and now we're changing like wild stars the one I can think of right away it that said oh yeah we we're going to do that but we can't so instead we want to do quality for you so we're going to do this Christmas I know. And, and <laughs> Halloween. Ruined Christmas. <laughs> well, that's another thing as well, because um, Arena okay. had they had the break at the start uh, towards the start of the year, and that was a lot for the China release and stuff like that. So we had nothing for a while. But the second break that they had, uh, like the mid-season break for season two, all we got uh, for the feature uh, feature pack at the end of that was basically copy and pasted from the China Chinese release. Like the slight yeah. changes they'd made there, they brought to ours. So they weren't working on feature pack stuff really then. Which would only really mean that they were been working on you know a secret projects, and yeah. on top of that, Christmas and Halloween are the same as last year, so they've not been putting resources into these yeah. like holidays. Yeah, exactly. So they're obviously working on something else. There's you know, a they're going to use that time for other going stuff. To something, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I I can't really think of anything else. And if it was season three, they would have spoken about it on you know. Um, points of interest or something like that, you know, just yeah. said, oh, yeah, and then whatever. They would have maybe given us a timeline or maybe just brought it up at some point, you know, saying yeah, it's going to lead into... nothing the, for next the year. The finale is going to be huge and it's going to lead really well into next year with season three and it's just, they've not said anything. Yeah, and that's true. I've said it before as well, like, I really hope they don't leave us blind, um, left with potentially months of Winter's Day content, you know, <laughs> without knowing when it's going to end yeah. at all. Like, they have to give us something soon just so we know what's going on. Especially Maybe. if it's rehashed content. Maybe they're expecting us all to take months and months to figure out that damn jumping level. <laughs> <footage> to <the laughs> end. I haven't tried that I yet. I love it. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it was it's, so it, fun. It, it, it's the best bit about the patch. I yeah. absolutely adore it. It's, it, it, it's not as like, you know, you don't want to rip your own fingers out like the clock tower. But <laughs> it, it kind of like makes you think. And rather than it's... Rather than basing it on whether or not you can jig the cat, the camera right to jump to the right corner at the right time or whatever, it's all about kind of memorizing routes that the script tunnels take you through, and it's just like a really big kind of wander across the map. I um, I, I did a I did a take of it the other day, and it took me um, from beginning to end straight. It took me about twenty five minutes of yeah, just yeah. non stop movement. And oh, it's it's brilliant. And you get like some tonics at the end, which is really really cool, oh, cool. as well. Great fun, yeah. But I thought that I, was amazing. Like, like what 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 they've done with that this new bit of the silver waste is incredible. Like the the upside. Have you have you guys been to the upside down ship? Yeah, On, yeah. It's neat. No. Oh, dude, the, oh, have you not? So cool. No. Is, have you not been there? Is it in the new? <laughs> what is it in the new area? The far? Yeah. Northern? Yeah. Was, I didn't get yeah, to explore like, it in a the lot. top in the top yeah. right corner. There was like a blocked off gate to the script bit. And you can go through that now, and you can go underground, and there's like, it's massive. Like, there's a huge underground ship. I think it's called the SS Topsy Turvy or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you, if, you were to, if you fall off that, like, the fall takes you, like, I don't know, it's like a 20 second drop or something. Like, it's massive. It's huge underground <laughs> cavern, and there's a big jumping puzzle that, like, takes you through the tunnels and then up into the surface and then back down, and it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, I so haven't good. had a chance to do that yet. Oh, I'm excited. But we Weirdly, there is there is a way to survive the drop off the ship. Yeah, there's, like, there's a small, there's tiny, like a tiny pool of water yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered that by accident, luckily. Like I just <laughs> fell and oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy because there's there's bugger all down there, but you can just like get down there and you can have a little bit of a wander around and you can so, take script tunnels here and there. It's like I'm I am actually really digging the silver wastes. Yeah. That is the one thing there. we have to give the second half of season two is that the new map is yeah. pretty fantastic it's, it's yeah. well, people, a lot of people were saying you know it's how or should have been you know that whole push and pull between you know the players and the environment and stuff yeah. like that uh, it's it's really really fun i mean i've farmed it a lot for the crests you know for the armor set and stuff like that but um it's it's really fun still yeah, yeah. i enjoy I'll, it I'll, I would like to draw attention to a comment Colin Johansson made before the game's launch uh -oh. where he said we don't make grindy MMOs <laughs> this is Johansson a thousand crests for one <laughs> for one boot trouser yeah. glove or shoulder bit yeah. you rascally bastard <laughs> <laughs> you rascally. but to, to, to be honest I've 
I don't actually care because the the area is is that fun to do and you pick up so much loot anyway. Mm -hmm. It's like if it was something where the return would be relatively small, I'd get annoyed at it. But the fact that you rack up crests so quickly and you get your champion loot bags, you go down into the breach and you have a bit of a scrap, you get achievements and you rip gizzards out of people, which is kind of <laughs> cool. It, and it's like I I went in and I was like, so I need so you get a boot requisition, you get a sh you get the trousers, you get that. So I was like, I need like nine or ten thousand crests to get everything. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. And then I kind of went in and I was like, actually, this is all right. Actually, that's another thing. Sorry, sorry. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get off my soapbox in a second. We're in like the first two episodes. You get you actually get the box with the thing in, where you yeah. can choose yeah. like your your um, glove or your shoulder pad, light, medium, or heavy. You get a boot requisition order where all it does is it unlocks the oh, boots yeah. from a vendor. And I was just like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't actually care because I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's and so good. The map is really, really fun. And I think I, they've, 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 they've taken like the, the template that Drytop had. I think Drytop, you know, where you go around doing the events and, uh, you know, you get your... What what did you collect in dry to Ambro Ambrite, maybe? No, it was um Geodes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Geodes. <laughs> and <laughs> oh. <laughs> Geod. Like I I I did an Ambrite weapon crafting video. Do you have any idea how wrong it took me to get all those geodes just to buy the recipe and then unlock all those damn boxes to get one Ambrite fossil. Yeah. <sighs> geodes do not drop anywhere near as fast as bandit crests. Uh, no, I remember it's... farming for geodes to finish Madri and Madri 2 yeah. and I needed so yeah. many geodes and I'm just like this is the only oh, God, thing I... holding me up. I can do everything else but I just need to farm geodes. <laughs> uh, dry top like... felt like a... Oh, sorry. On you go. Oh no, I was, I was just going to quickly just say that I like the sense and the Silver Waste has, has, a, has a nice sense of that you're actually in a war. That's what yeah. I kind of like. Yeah, but, uh, yeah like, it's uh, in the airships and stuff. Because so. like, yeah, like the, the, the airships being brought in, what's going on in your little setup base and the conversations that are happening, it actually really does feel like Tyria has come together to fight this onslaught and then right, when yeah. you go out there, it's like a constant back and forth battle and it really does feel like because like the the this the scarlet destruction of lion's arch was more like you're, you're just trying to survive it whereas yeah, yeah. this feels yeah. like we're actually going forth in an actual combined multiplayer war um yeah. so i i like that sense that they've done there what 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 i really like about it as well they've managed to They've managed to get rid of Zerg tactics somehow. I don't yeah, quite understand yeah. how they've done it. Because mm. my my probably my free, my previous favorite mission uh, kind of st mission area instance was the. Um, do you remember the uh, the uh, the battle for Lion's Arch when you go in and you have to do the events and then the uh, mm. the red red green and blue knights appear? I thought that was I thought that was really cool. But once the boss fights start. It is you. You get into that Zerg mentality, yeah. and you all jump in one big group from area to other, and it just carries on when you actually get onto the breach maker into that final encounter with Scarlet's hologram. But they've managed they've managed to break it up completely, so you can just run around doing whatever, and as long as like the the uh, the pack balls get through and the defenses go up, and eventually the uh, the breach starts, it's great. And then you can do that. You get your nightmare kit if you're lucky. You run into the labyrinth and you die inside the first ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. Get no loot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's it's brilliant. I think Dry Top felt um it feels really empty now seeing Silver Wastes. Like yeah. it I think the events just didn't like I don't know, they they just felt really small. They feel really small now and I mean and really unimportant. And the whole favor of the Zephyrites thing is basically, you know, it's just really a discount at the shop. It's not like it's a big reward kind of thing. I think Silver so Waste is just, it's its really, really good. And and like you were saying at the start, Alex, like, I really want to see maps with hearts and, and make it feel like, you know, actual proper zones. Um, but I think, and then at the start, I was like, oh, Silver Waste is just going to end up being like another dry top kind of thing. And then 
the events were really fun. They've added so much to it, you know, like the whole underground section now. There's the labyrinth there. There's, yeah. you know, each little bit. This, it's actually a really, really packed um, map. And I, there's actually the top corner as well. Pe people who have broken out have seen little things in there. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll probably flesh that out again next patch, I think. So Voice is, is a really good example of, of, like, dynamic events working, you know, yeah. pretty much perfectly, I think. It's like everyone who's doing anything in that map is you know contributing in some way and it's just it's really really good and yeah it's not a zerg thing so that's just another bonus right do you think they're going to open up the far west part of the map well that's what i thought like i mean there's those vines that have been appearing yeah like slowly which are um, so since, awesome i'm so yeah, intimidated whenever massive, i stand by one of those huge. things and then the then i saw uh, there's three of them coming out one out of each uh each like lane yeah. And which makes me so excited because I love the marionette <laughs> fight. Um, yeah. And then one of them has another like arch that's going even further out. And when I saw yeah. that, when I like realized it in game, I was like, <gasps> I like got genuinely like, oh my god! And like you literally like feel like you're staring up at this thing, yeah. like it's massive and it's just oh, and it's pulsating and moving. <laughs> and it's just like it's, crazy. Uh, it's like the older uh, the worms from June, isn't it? The the shape. Right. <laughs> Whoever controls nice. the binds controls the universe. <laughs> I think it'd be a, a perfect way to kind of round off the map if they did add something like you know once you've done the breach or something like that, everyone comes, gathers it, splits into different lanes, and then pushes for like you right. know final bosses down each one kind of thing. Kind of like be a zerg, really, really cool. but not a zerg because you have to split yeah. in the, in the yeah, lanes. Yeah. And so you all, uh, the whole map gets to work together at one area, but you're still not a Zerg. Yeah. I think it's, mm. it's pretty brilliant. Has, has anyone noticed since the patch dropped, the footfalls that you make are kind of squelchy. They've got the watery sound. Yeah. They like, <laughs> you're splish yeah. sploshing around the silver waist now. Well, that's the thing, yeah. and I, I don't think that, I, that Sorry, wasn't there before. No, no, that, that appeared with this patch. Oh, because we were technically pushing now into what was the Maguma jungle. Because in, in Guild Wars 1, the, the dry top area, um, and with Ventari's refuge, it was a relatively small space, and it prog and the dryness kind of progressed further down to the south, mm -hmm. rather than going up north, because that's where you first encount encountered like um, like the breeze riders and, and all that kind of thing. So may if... You know, Mordrum was kind of like, ah, he's creating the jungle using maybe the water from the uh, the Lake of Janthir or something like that, sucking it down and getting his vines to do something. That's a terrible theory. Can we cut that out? <laughs> 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 you you? Oh. No. No. Nope. Ignore that bit. Ignore that bit. But I'd I, 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 I certainly think there's something going on there that I'd, yeah, I'd be surprised if, if the landscape didn't change in the near future. Yeah. It becomes a bit more tropical. Well, it will have thrown that in for like, a reason, uh, you know. Mm. I like, uh, uh, Alex, I, I uh, love how you uh, cut yourself off so quick of your like own like theory. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's go to, uh, that sucks like crap. I, no. <laughs> I, can, it's, I can hear myself talking and then it's like, when, it, when it's and just your me brain talking to myself, I'm just like, that's fine. <laughs> and then it's like, people actually watch this and they're just going, who's that? <laughs> yeah, I'm I, I, I'm like really hoping that we actually get some kind of a Mortremoth like group world map fight of some kind for for last one. I've just I, I don't know. We've like got a, that giant that flower, purple flower thing that we saw like in yeah, a cave in the, during in the, the story, instance, the story yeah. instances. So and we haven't like nothing else has become of that. So maybe I'm hoping we'll eventually maybe that will be like a world boss type thing or a map boss type yeah. thing. I like the idea I, of once once the the map event is over. Of course, now you have everybody going to the labyrinth to farm chests, but maybe yeah. you can go do this instead. What? How would you make people not go to the labyrinth and go yeah. to this boss instead? I, I make it slightly less annoying than the labyrinth, I think. Because <laughs> well, the thing, I mean, like with the with the like the ghostly mortar rounds or whatever they are, you get hit once, you get downed, and then they kill you straight off. Which is yeah. kind of annoying. They might as well just insta kill you, so you can res and get back. So I think, providing that the rewards and the game and the game mechanics are more innovative and more interesting than just kind of av avoid the one hit kill, I don't yeah. necessarily yeah. think that's going to be a problem because as, as long as the breach event still gets completed, you're still going to be getting your greater nightmare key. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, unlocking that just That's what I love as well. There's titles that have come back in the achievements as well. I'm just thinking of all this oh, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, 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 one, of, one of the things that I kind of really missed from the achievements is like, yeah, achievement points are all, are all right. I get my chest every now and again. But I've, I've really missed getting like titles and there are some really cool ones like there's the be all and end all. There's the dark yeah. travel just for, like opening the chest, which is really, really cool. It's like we, we need more of that. We need because... There, there, there are a few that pe people tend to stick to, like the Emperor or um, been there, done that. And bless you. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and Blazing Light and that kind of thing. I just love to see them bring more and more in. And so you can actually start seeing loads of different titles and then having to go, oh, I wonder that person's done and actually go through it. And then you can, yeah, yeah. you can find the content where you get that title. And it's like, oh, I kind of want to do that. And then you can do it. And now all this content's permanent. You can. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I ha I had an idea about um about the labyrinth. Um, uh, it, when you, when you go into the labyrinth, it's you're going down quite a ways. And now that we've got this slushy sloshy, I just keep thinking of like water rising. So maybe it gets flooded, and you Ooh, can't be... go in there anymore. <laughs> that would be cool. Or it could cool. be an or underwater you... dungeon. An underwater <laughs> dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> have, 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 have we all done the Fountain of Rand mini dungeon, by the way, up in um, Diesa Plateau? Oh, oh I uh, yeah, don't yeah. even remember. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's it's the single most frustrating. Thing. It's it it's was... not so bad now because people like farm it and stuff like that, yeah. you know. And it's it's kind of easy. You just get like a mesmer to pour, uh, pour you inside and stuff. But the first time I did that was a nightmare. <laughs> there's um, I think that there's a bit where you. In the crafting of Mordry, you know the place you go to get like the um, the crystal water thing or something. Yeah, a bit... yeah. yeah, yeah. It's in there. Like, there's another like forty odd minutes of mini dungeon after that, and it just goes on and on and on and on. And you you need people on like team speak or whatever to get yeah, it done. Yeah. And I tried it once with like team chat, and I was like, you know what, this isn't worth it. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need those ten achievement points. <laughs> But what's I really wonder, uh, uh, sorry, yeah. I was going to say, what's, what's really interesting about the Silver Waste map is I only found this out the other day because it's built really, really high into the skybox. Mm -hmm. So the Silver Waste is like all the way up here. And then the bottom of where you can fall down to on the ship is actually at like normal ground level. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of weird. They've kind of done it the other way around. So the way they've built the map, oh. it, you start really high and then you just kind of go down to normal level. Oh. Yeah, so that's yeah. I think people breaking out of it quite early on. That's I think they they kind of made a guess that we were going to go underground at some point just because of how high up the whole map is in the in the box kind of thing. And <laughs> I I did manage to fall off the map once, and <laughs> the, the the fall down to the water underneath was insane, man. And you could see all these little bridges, you know, where obviously now the script bit is and stuff like that. And it was just so exciting, like. Oh, I wonder what's going to be underground. I can't wait to get there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then in the distance, you see some dragon teeth. <laughs> That'd be so good. Gigantic dragon teeth. See, people were thinking as well, like maybe Silver Waste would end up with like us fighting one of the dragon champions, you know, kind of like the Claw of Jormag style, but for Mordramoth. But and I'm get, I, I, at first, I was like, yeah, that'd be a really cool idea, and maybe that's what they're going to do. But it doesn't feel like that's going to be kind of the end goal. I think it'll probably just be three lanes and three kind of tough bosses but not necessarily huge champions or anything like that you know yeah. just so we've got the shadow of the dragon that flew off yeah um yeah like where did that thing go that thing's still out there i certainly think they need to do something to promote the longevity of the map because like you're saying i've not been back to dry top since i probably since i did my Mordry 2 video and um if you're always saying that that map's kind of dead aside from the guilds, you say, right, we're going to go in and do a tier six run. Yeah, if they, yeah. if if you start to run into that problem again, where you need a large population of players in there to actually make the the events viable, all you're going to end up with is a bunch of empty maps, and people mm -hmm. are still going to be hanging. Where do people hang out in Guild Wars now these days? I have no idea. Like, I'm where just... do people? Silver Wastes. Like just... <laughs> new map. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what I mean. Say like if if a new area opens up with the expansion or the next pack or whatever, all you've got is like the silver wastes with the potential to have a series of really great, really rewarding events, but nobody's doing them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd, it'd be a real waste to a a real silver waste 
Oh, oh, hey. oh, oh. See what you did there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hillary. That was good. That was good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it would be. I, th I think we've we've kind of seen what happened. What's happened a little bit to Orr before they introduced the uh, like the proper world events. Mm. And that the area just became really empty really fast, and th that would be a crying shame for that to happen to the Silver Wastes. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to ask you guys, um, do, do you find uh, naked Silvari very unsettling? Because <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, 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 find I, I, saw some I agree. I saw some, uh, some comments on, on that, people saying, we were just walking around, there's all these naked Silvari, but for one, they weren't naked naked, and, for, and, and two, they... It, they were babies. I loved that instance. We were walking through. I was like, "Look at the baby Silvari. They're Just cute." Find a, I, I find it kind of creepy that they actually have like physical leaves blocking their. Yeah. Yeah. They, they grow their own underwear like on butts. themselves. Yeah, it's that like like. Like that always disturbs me, which is why I'm I'm always uncomfortable trying to make a Silvari because it's like that image is, is just kind of <laughs> creepy. But and then and 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 also in this patch, the interesting thing I found was when the Asira were saying um, that they don't seem to have any actual reproductive organs. Yeah, because um, yeah, they don't which, reproduce. Well, like I, I mean, I yeah. Well, I I I find that fascinating because they're they're always talking about love, 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 and. There's lots of like you know same gender um, uh, love between them, and I, I only put the quotes on because if they have no reproductive organs, then the genders they have are truly just like a, a was, false front. I they, think they there really, was a comment um, from one know. of the developers or something like that. There was so I think someone asked ArenaNet that, and they responded with like, you know, they're not born, you know, they don't get pregnant or anything like that, but they still have the organs, you know, just. Is that to win to it have fun with each other? You know how it yeah, is. Yeah, because they Birds I don't the bees, think man. they're not because they're they're not even technically humanoids. They just they just take that form. Yeah. And so I don't. They're yeah, not technically male or female. Yeah. They just take yeah. the form of a male or female. I believe. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because uh, that's something that I just find kind of fascinating, very alien about them. Because they they yeah. look so so much like like just like humanoid leaf people, but then it's like, oh, they actually don't have those organs and they could have come out looking like any number of creatures on Tyria. Like, I would love to see a Sovari char. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> would you argue that? This is going to, again, another ridiculous theory. If they could come out looking like any creature, could they come out looking like a Mordran Thrasher? That'd Why be strange. not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if, what, what mm. if the, the Mordrum are just corrupted Sylvari? Because you see, you've got the branded right, right. over down in the um, in the uh, Ascalon lands, all the way down to the Crystal Desert in the uh, in the brand. And even though they kind of look fairly similar to their human chart, etc. counterparts, I don't think it's a huge leap. No, or, I don't either. They did say wrong. that they're yeah. saying that like. Uh, well, I've, uh, see, that's a really good idea, and that's one I actually had. And I was talking to some guildies about it, and they were like. Um, they basically said that the reason the Savari looked like that is because they were like planted on Ronan's family's graves. Oh, right, right. So that's why yeah. they'd come out human like yeah. or something like that. Right. So I guess that could be. It. But I really like to about the, it was said right in the in the last episode about because uh, Mordremoth can corrupt the dream. The Pale Tree actually protected yeah. Yeah. them from Mordremoth's corruption because Mordremoth's one of his spheres of influence is of the mind. Yeah. So he tried, I guess, tried to corrupt the dream, and I forget the exact wording. Um, and then she protected them from it. So I guess I ahead. forgot about the whole how he's like got the the sphere of mind or whatever it is. Um, mind. Um, so I guess, yeah, something. Yeah, I think it, well, that was it. So I guess that's why the Savari we've seen that have been corrupted have just been the same as normal Savari, but they've kind of their mind's yeah. been screwed up. It's not like they're physically changed like all of the other Elder Dragons have done to people, which is quite interesting because you'd think they would follow some kind of theme, you know, like have them kind of deformed or something like that, which would be really cool to see, but it's more just that they've gone crazy. So, I don't know. I like the idea that, 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 that the Silvari are kind of like, it's like Morjamoth's minions are like the way that they technically should be and that the Silvari yeah. are like mm. the a, a purified 
form. Yeah. Of, of, of them, they're just this in, influenced what... by the tablet and by yeah. Ronan. Yeah. Also, oh, 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 just so we're really, really quick. If you want to think about what other things uh, Savar look like, um, if you remember Gremlin Batch movie, there's a uh, vegetable Gremlin in it, which just came to mind. <laughs> like, that that would be a perfect, you know, non-human looking Savar. <laughs> It was awesome. So just if you want a if 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 you want a funky me- mental image, he's he's got a carrot for claws. Yeah. You should uh, <laughs> check him out. <laughs> I, I hope that they bring him because you know in the um, in the the final instance where you know Vorp was torturing the Azura, we saw Kanak in. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was cool. It was yeah. so cool to yeah. see him there. Yeah, I was like yeah. Kanak, yeah, kick some ass. <gasps> and Scarlet, was, Scarlet in the Grove is yes, like a newborn. Exactly. Oh my yeah, god, I freaked so out. When, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was just looking around. I'm like, oh, some of them have names. I was like, oh, Kiara. Oh my god! I ran over. And she's awesome. like tinkering with a golem. I was like, yes, yes. I was so happy. That was really cool. Man. I'd, I'd quite like to see Malik make an appearance before the end of season two as well. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I mean, I know he disappeared to go off and find another pale tree or whatever, but I'm surprised they haven't brought him back or at least referenced him more. Um, because this kind of he's kind of relevant, you know, to well, stuff that's going yeah. on. Well, what's what's interesting is because Kanak isn't connected to the dream, is he? He's not. Uh, no, he never had a dream because he was washed down shore. I think it was Some prematurely or something like that. So he never. No, but that wouldn't. I have no idea. He didn't have a dream though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No yeah I don't think he even knew what it was. it was. He's like, what are you talking about a dream? I don't. <laughs> yeah. We don't. I don't have that. I never had that. Yeah, I don't. It's really cool because I was part of, like his story was part of um, the Savari personal story, right? So yeah, I, I think that's so cool that they had kind of had these ideas so far back. That's really it's mm-hmm, neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just liked how we like got to see just how dark the the uh, uh, Sura could be. And, yeah, and yeah, how it's, it's kind like, of shady they, stuff. Like, it's it's like they they like really have a very thin sense of. Morality because they like just say, "Oh, it's nothing personal. It's science. You know, we're just cutting <laughs> yeah. up living sentient beings because you're animals. You're not, you know, an Asura. So you're, <laughs> you're obviously not, you know, a, a real being. We're just gonna yeah. Cut they you didn't, up and they didn't know that they were sentient. So they're just like they're just plants. And I like how you, the little um the little ambient conversations. Oh, I have extracted some pollen from them and and this and oh, yeah. this one. And I don't know how they reproduce. And it's like they're truly studying them. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, it's dark and creepy. And all it's voice spray. acted. Guys... All fully voice acted. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think of the stealth mechanics? That was fun. Um, it was a lot more fun than I it thought was it was going to be. Yeah. It was... I couldn't stealth. Like I just, I don't know. I just set the alarm off every time. I was like, right. I'm gonna be really sneaky. Didn't work. Yeah. You know what? I I uh, uh, found in the I, I think it's like the third um, uh, one that 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 you have to like click two triggers on two sides. There's yeah. one main yeah. golem. There's like two smaller ones and a yeah. couple of Sura. And so I was trying really hard to do this kind of sneaky thing and really get around them and, and, and try to wait for the right timing. I kept failing each time because like, I would like click in this and say, there's a sound and you'd walk over and click it off and I'd run over to the next one and I wouldn't be fast enough. And then on like the third time that I got spotted by the detectors, I was just like, oh, okay, I, I'm not going like, to run away. I'm just going to fight them to see if I can actually fight <laughs> yeah. them all. And I just destroyed and killed everybody. Yeah, like, oh. Case was totally like, OP. I just, yeah. and I just like, uh, uh, clicked the thing. I was like, oh, okay, so I don't have Oh, I could have just killed them. <laughs> still, yeah, it's like, okay, from, from now on, if I see this, I'm just going to kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> and go boop, boop, okay. <laughs> That's how I did the last instance when there when the little like robotrons basically showed up at each yeah. of the things like I before I could figure out what to do I thought you had to run up and kill them I wasn't sure what to do and then I had uh. everything in the room on me trying to kill yeah. me and I pretty much just slaughtered everything and I was like oh that was easy Yeah Kate is like a Kate, lot of fun. Kate you're a to terrible control. thief. <laughs> she is like a lo- lot of fun to control like those backflips and somersaults yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I was like, Ooh. I like yeah, the they heel made skill. It real flashy. It was good. Cuz like the heel skill like dodged you back and stuff like that. That was yeah. really useful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I right. like dodge back and then rush forward. It was like, "Woo, we." Have you guys 
I mean, uh, and I know it's not like a huge thing, but uh, the PvP changes, have you guys played around with any of that? Nah. I don't PvP at all, <laughs> so I don't know anything yeah. about that. None of us PvP, <laughs> it's like, no. I've, I've got know. this. The, the, the only time I ever PvP, and I don't know why I'm admitting to this, I go on those bloody farm things because I'm lazy. <laughs> and just whenever I need like, an, a, like a mindless hour just to do something else, it just, like, I just drop on a fit some ball, jump off the side on Skyhammer or whatever it is, and just <laughs> slowly, slowly rack up my PvP. But uh, <laughs> I, I, apparently they made changes, and I'm sure there are people out there that care about them. But, yeah, uh, give us a quick rundown, Corvus. Um, they just they changed the way matchups and stuff work. Um, so instead yeah. of there being like so like solo and team like arena stuff, which always felt like a big deal the first time you're going into it, you know, like everyone else would just join, choose a server and join that kind of thing. They're all kind of bunched together, so there's ranked and unranked now and stuff like that. And the UI is all nice and flashy. I thought it was really cool because they changed the way dishonor works, which is like a invisible stat that you get if you leave games early and you know basically is just like a punishment for being a dick basically um so they they changed the way that works and it's kind of i thought it was really good because it was the kind of stuff you'd maybe see in like a small feature pack or something like that but they're just they made stuff up they're testing it so they've got like a month or so of testing just now to see how people like it and i know i think i think it's really cool that like we're getting winter's day in the finale on the same day and we got this you know just while as another episode out they're kind of Instead of, you know, we're going to take a break and then you get this cool feature pack and then we're going to come back, you know, they just hair take it and I think that's really mm -hmm. cool and it's kind of a fresh thing for them to be doing instead of separating things out and making us wait for a lot of things. Yeah. The changes are nice, that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah, there was a lot of subtle little interface changes all over the entire game that were barely even announced. And, and yeah, the new logout really screen. Them. Yep, new yeah, logout screen. I it's, it's, it just looks nice. Doesn't it? It's just yeah. kind of like nice big metallic box. And just yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, oh that's cool. another thing as well. Um, if you're like queuing for a match and stuff like that in PvP, if you change windows and stuff, it actually makes uh, the uh, it, like flash on the taskbar when the match is about to begin and stuff oh. like that, or when you get, like an invite, just to remind you and stuff like that. I think, and I think it works when you get a whisper as well. Um, oh, so really? it's just a really, really neat little change. It's just you know. Stuff right, and they didn't say, oh, guess what? We made all these changes. Yeah, it was just exactly. subtle, like, here you go. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. We just made these changes. It's really nice. And that with the little stealth patches, you know, with um, the vines coming out and, you know, the football yeah. stuff. I just think it's it's cool that they're doing this stuff, you know. It, it it does make it the not only the game feel, like, alive and the world feel alive, but it's just cool that they're thinking of neat little things that might improve stuff all the time and just throwing them out there. Yeah. Like, put the ace on Honor Waves Part 1. What? <laughs> you know, you know. So this this, this was um, a, a a ninja patch that came in. That they didn't announce. Um, you know, if you do ask Clone and Catacombs, that on there's a chance that this troll jumps out, and if you're really unlucky, you fight him at the same time as Cola, and he like he like knocks back. He does a whole load of damage, uh -uh. and and what they did was without telling anybody, there's a troll that you have to fight in honor of the way part one before you get to one of the midway bosses, and you just kind of slam him into a corner and you can take him down. They copy pasted this troll from AC and <laughs> stuck it in honor of the way without telling anybody. So so every time people are like, yeah, let's get this troll, and then it just wipes the floor with everybody, and everyone's like, what the hell? And like this this troll is a complete nightmare as well. So he's actually quite hard and there's a tactic where you try and skip a whole bunch of random mobs and it's very hard to do now because you need all of that area to actually fight this damn troll <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> trying to cheat our dungeons have yeah. a troll yeah. they literally <laughs> troll on us they did oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we need to wrap up the show we are at our hour um thank you everybody for watching um you can check us out on the interwebs i will put links and annotations and all that fun stuff so you can check everybody out um Ak, real quick what kind of things are you working on if anything uh um i'm not really working on too much right now i've got a lot of personal stuff um i may i've I've got a pest issue, but the nice thing is that if it's if it 
If it is what it is, the people that I applied to for subsidized housing basically told me that if it is what it is, I just need a form and they can like move me out the hell out of here like pronto. So, oh, cool. Um, I'm That's... excited for that. Until then, I have to live with these things. So I'm I'm kind of a bit stressed out for things. <laughs> but <laughs> just be like Red Lock and all those little bugs. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, because when you have bugs crawling on you when you go to sleep at night, it's not not Ew. fun to wake up. Yeah. To. No. Uh, and uh, yeah, so. so, so Sorry to mention that, but um, if <laughs> if if I can actually move out and get into like this new place and finally have some peace of mind, that's when I'd want to actually make stuff. So that's cool, cool. cool. Uh, Good luck until, with that. <laughs> un, until then, I just come on here once in a while. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Corvus, what have what have you been up to? Not much, um, but I have another video in the works, so that's something. To look forward to, I guess. Is it a secret? It's a secret. No, it's like a new <laughs> bit of music, so it's nothing, <laughs> nothing too exciting. But you know, Echoes it's Billboard related and stuff like that. So <laughs> check it out. That's an order. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, what, what's going on with you besides well, moving and now having internet? Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's really weird. In the six weeks I've been off, I've gained like a ton of subscribers, and I've done <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, so by that logic, I can just kind of just give keep up. Doing nothing. My sub count keeps going up. No, um, I'm starting to record a Christmas song for Guild Wars 2. Nice. Uh, so oh, cool. I actually, I actually did one last year on my old channel, so I'll try and upload it again. Um, oh, nice. It's about a, yeah, it's a very dodgy ripoff of a Chuck Berry song. And um, <laughs> as, as, oh, aside dude, from that. As, aside Very from cool. that, I'm um, uh, still doing the Guild Wars 2 stuff, although the achievement videos are harder to do now, now that <laughs> they essentially boil down to don't suck at the game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and grind a whole bunch of stuff, so I am a little behind with those, but that's going on. Uh, Wasteland 2 still going on, uh, which is great. Of um, Pillars of Eternity, um, Dragon Age Inquisition, if I can get round to it maybe it's just it, it's it, it's very hard to make videos about uh, an open world sandbox game which yeah. is really really weird um i'm sure i'm doing other stuff as well like other pieces but they're obviously not important i can't learn. check anyway <laughs> <laughs> very good well, check all of them out, and if you enjoyed the show or you want to see for, more from me, give me a subscribe and a like, and tell us down in the comments what you guys thought of Seeds of Truth. And we will hopefully be back next week to talk about the trailer for the final episode. And look forward to Winter's Day! Yay! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more thing, can we all say congratulations to Aurora Peachy for getting her legend? Oh my gosh, yes. That was Again. <laughs> again. Yes. I'm officially for the next for the next peachy party, I'm officially I've put in a ton of bids with all of the gold I got left for minis and tonics and skins and all of the stuff that I'm going to give away cuz <laughs> So there's going to be big giveaways on the next peachy party uh, for the next patch. So be there. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, yes. I really donated and got me the legend. It was, it was I even got donated to some of the developers. It was, it was amazing. But <laughs> so you get that Everybody mail for like a hundred gold or something like that in one mail, and then you took the gold, well, and well, then the next mail was a hundred gold as well. <laughs> it was insane. You were just like, I was like, are you guys serious? It was crazy. But thank you, thank you guys. Okay, so we'll see you guys next time. Hope to see you in the next Peachy Party. Check out everybody's channel and we'll see you next time. Goodbye! Goodbye, my